This quarantine has affected all of us in some way, and for many, it has been causing us to make more trips to the fridge to snack on whatever we can find. Yeah, and a lot of people are now discovering they're putting on a few extra pounds. Mikey Hood got to the bottom of what many are calling the quarantine 15. You've heard about the freshman 15, right? Well, now it's all about the quarantine 15, and I got a chance to catch up with some health experts to find out why we are snacking so much. There's definitely a drive to snack. It comes from us being stressed and living in uncertain times. Our body goes into this prepare mode where it wants to prepare, and that leads us to feel hungry so that we get this, you know, we have the fuel necessary for the journey ahead. Dietitian Andrew Wade also says boredom plays a big part. We have a lot more downtime, right? We are at home. A lot of the things we like to do on a daily basis, we're unable to do. And so food is a fun thing that's kind of an easy filler, and it becomes sort of the default. We're stressed, and so food can be an emotional outlet. Yes, absolutely, and food is, is meant to be emotional. It's not bad to have food be emotional, and food is meant to be satisfying in terms of filling, but also satisfying mentally, emotionally as well. So it's important to remember that that's not in itself a bad thing, but we can definitely try and focus on our meals being more enjoyable or tastier. A lot of times a snack is uh, is sort of a, a leftover desire after a meal, so to speak. And so something to think about is when you order food out, you're usually less likely to snack, and that's because the meal was exciting or enjoyable. Cooking at home, sometimes we tend to stick to the basics. This has been a time where I've been telling people to bring out the favorite comfort sides, like the mac and cheese or the pasta dishes. And Andrew Wade suggests making sure protein and veggies are still the stars of each meal. And when you snack, try pairing different foods together to feel more satisfied afterwards. Also consider protein prepping for the week. Say I grill a bunch of chicken on a Sunday, instead of eating that same lonely piece of grilled chicken day in and day out, I might chop it up and toss it with um, soy sauce in a pan or put some cream of chicken soup and bake it with some vegetables. I'm guilty as charged at night. I, I find myself 9 30, 10 o'clock snacking. That's no good. So if you're snacking that late, typically that means you're tired. So instead of snacking, just go to bed. Jacqueline Hale, a certified nutritionist, says keeping a quarantine schedule for yourself is a good idea. So a quarantine schedule is just having a specific schedule in place during the day so that you can have time for yourself to eat what time you wake up, take breaks, meditate, read, whatever you need to do to keep your health and wellness in place. And including a hobby into your schedule can help too. Play video games, whether you like to knit, or whether you like to draw, or whether you even you needing to learn to play guitar. Finding something that is interesting to you, that keeps your brain engaged in some way, your mind's gonna do that instead of defaulting to snacking. And with more people facing the possibility of heading back to work, you might have to prep a couple meals in advance because you're not going to have an hour to cook every night. We might need to consider using a meal delivery service for two nights a week to ease up on the cooking for the family. Well, I feel better already, and I'm so looking forward to preparing dinner tonight. I'm going to have some mac and cheese. That's what I like to hear. Mac and cheese in moderation, of course. I'm Mikey Hood, reporting for PTL.